Now I'm joined by Sir Bill Cash, MP for Stone, a Tory grandee who was first elected to Parliament in 1984. Sir Bill is going to explain the amendments that he and his fellow Tory rebels have persuaded the government to incorporate into Suella Braverman's illegal migration bill. And that's the bill, of course, that the government is desperately hoping will finally stop the boats. Sir Bill, absolutely yes. delightful to see you this Very morning. Nice to see you too. Um, now, will this bill stop the boats? That's the question. Well, I believe it will now. And what I said to Rishi when he was appearing in the House a few weeks ago was we've got to make sure this works. And I want to say something really important, which is that we've had a really constructive dialogue with the government, with Number 10, and with the Prime Minister and with Suella Braverman. And we've now come up with something which... I know they've put a huge amount of work into as well, with some very, very brilliant assistance from external mm -hmm. lawyers as well. And we've actually improved the bill very much, made it much more relevant and tougher, but also fair and reasonable. So it doesn't get into a situation now whereby people can, I believe, attack it on grounds of international law breach, yes. but at the same time it will satisfy the requirements which two to one of the British people now support, which is this bill in principle. But this is the million dollar question. Will it stop the boats and indeed result in people actually being deported to Rwanda? Yes. To be fair to him, your opposition MP, Jonathan Ashworth, told a quite good joke today. He basically said that more journalists had been sent to Rwanda than <laughs> actual illegal I did migrants. Hear that. I mean, he's right, isn't he? So far we've well, had no action on this. It must be hugely frustrating to backbenchers like you. Well, it was, and certainly when the Boards and Nationality Bill was going through a couple of years ago, I did put down an amendment which was supported by about 70 MPs, the effect of which would have been to have dis displaced the, Euro the Human Rights Act to get all together in the European Convention. Mm. What we're now doing is actually placing a very severe restriction on the manner in which the courts can interpret the arrangements under the European Convention so that effectively we're going to be able to prevent the courts from just simply making up their own minds as to how to do it. And there's a very important principle here, Camilla, and it's this. Parliamentary sovereignty, and this was, this was also conceded by Jack Straw and Derry Irvin when, they, when I was there when the Human Rights Act first came yes. through. If Parliament makes clear and unambiguously its intention, clear to the to the courts, the courts will obey that. And that's what this bill will now do. I could go into the detail, no, but I won't. But, but what, that what that you're is really saying important. is we're not going to have a last-minute intervention no, from Strasbourg right. when there's a bus Correct. full of people to be deported. That is exactly right. And okay. actually, there's also going to be a proper dialogue with us and the European Court, and the courts are not going to be able just to decide on their own account what they think, just on it, or okay. just a matter of interpretation. And let's talk about migrants who claim to be under 18 when they're not. There's a really fascinating fascinating and frankly yeah. ludicrous story in the mail on Sunday about this 42-year-old jihadist with a beard yes. and a receding hairline who claimed to have <clears throat> been a child. Yeah. Then he's got a human rights lawyer on his case I when we, the government has tried to deport him. What do your amendments do about that kind of situation? Well, um, very simply, uh, the, the numbers of people who at the moment, in, I think in 2022, uh, half the people who were coming over and claiming to be... Uh, claiming to be children were actually adults, yes. and it's that crazy. So really, really, that is also going to be dealt with. But the, the, the viewers and the listeners will be thinking, how does how does a guy with a beard and a receding hairline? I know, hairline, completely absurd. Uh, do we know how this I happens? Have, no, because he just it, claims he's an under eighteen, it, and it, everyone it, listens and believes but him. This is what this is where the tightening up. It's not just tightening up, but the actual prevention of situations like that had to be dealt with. And that is going to be dealt with, and it's really essential to make sure that people who are just simply real adults don't get away with it. But the numbers were really quite dramatically bad. And on that. When you say deal with it, one of the amendments deals with this idea of proper age checking. Correct. Is it with x-rays? Explain that to us well, a bit. There is a, the, the, in the previous bill, which became an act, there was a scientific assessment. Now the situation is going to be that there will be an assumption that a person is not the age that they say they are uh, if they refuse to go through these checks. And that's mm. really important because the fact is that they are means of checking what a person's age is by scientific assessment. But won't they be able to claim, oh, my human rights, you can't x-ray me without my permission? Now, that's where, that's exactly the point. And in fact, 
this issue of human rights is going to be checked against the background of the manner in which the courts are entitled to interpret it. And what is described as serious harm mm. is actually going to be defined according to whether or not there is real harm or there isn't real harm. And that means that there is going to be a proper definition of what harm is and therefore the interpretation of the courts is going to be restricted because they're not just going to be able to say, oh, we think that this is a, a human rights issue and therefore we're going to let yes. it go through. They're going to have to actually themselves, as a court, take into account the rules laid down okay. by Parliament. So backbenchers, including yourself, have done a good job on the bill, but then what happens together when it goes with to the, the government? Together with the government. Yeah. What <clears> happens <throat> when it goes to the House of Lords? Well, I'm afraid that that's a real problem. Uh, and I have heard quite a lot of people voicing off from the House of Lords already. Of course, mm. they won't have seen all the amendments have been put down. That may, might make it worse, actually, in a funny kind of way, because they seem to be very ideological about this, some of them. And the fact is they're not elected, <clears throat> they are not elected, they have to have regard to what the House of Commons has said. And bear in mind that when this bill, as I believe it will, will go through unamended in the next few days, then I think the House of Lords has an obligation having regard to I public know, but opinion. I know, we know how they behave. I know, well, they have actually been v very, v behaving very, very, I think, unreasonably on a number of issues over the last few couple of mm. years. So there is a real issue here about constitutional propriety, and I think the House of Lords wants to be very aware that this is a really big issue for the British people. The Prime Minister has made his position clear. We have actually made it clear that our policy is to deal with and to get away from a situation where people are allowed to stay on when they shouldn't. We need to detain people and also to move them out swiftly. So you think this is going to work in a nutshell, Bill? Do I do. I really second? do think it will work. It's, it's a great improvement on the previous. There will still be arguments, I'm sure about that, but I believe this is a great improvement and we've made a lot of progress in the last month.